Hello everybody out there. This is Dr. Francis Elbert. I'm a chiropractor with Total Health Systems in Chesterfield, Michigan. This is the first podcast of the God Health Experience with Total Health Systems. Today, my special guest on this first podcast is Dr. Steve Kane. He's a chiropractor with the company in the St. Clair Soares office. He's been a chiropractor for 12 plus years. He has previous personal trainer and boot camp instructor experience. He's also, he still works out obviously, but a previous all natural bodybuilder competitor. And he also has advanced training in functional neurology. Dr. Kane, welcome. Thanks for having me, Doc. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining me today. So uh, today we're going to just, we talked about um, maybe talking about with your experience as a a personal trainer, obviously a natural bodybuilder, to kind of, um, obviously we're both not 18 anymore, but we're definitely not 75, right? So we want to discuss maybe um, how to train through the years, maybe what to look for as far as um, avoiding injuries, what kind of exercises may or may not be uh, suitable for certain ages. So if you want to maybe uh, touch upon that a little bit, and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we'll start with just a high-level overview. We can always narrow in as, as we move forward. So uh, I, <clears throat> just from my own personal experience, I, I think one of the biggest mistakes that, that I made was lifting too heavy too early. So my dad got me exercising at a real young age. I was in third grade and you know, incredibly thankful. That's one of the reasons I became a chiropractor, just fell in love with the whole health and wellness field was that influence from my parents. But I was, the doctors did tell me, oh, you're going to be a 6'4", 6'5", based off your, your growth charts, and you know, about six foot even right now. And whether I would have gotten to 6'5", or not, I think I would have been at least an inch or two taller had I not have been doing squats and you know, some of those uh, heavier lifts at, at a young age. It was probably about thir- somewhere between 12 to 14 when my dad really started bringing me to the gym with him and doing some of his you know, heavier bodybuilder type workouts. So definitely a- avoiding that in, in the younger age. I- I'd say definitely avoid heavy lifting until your bones have fully matured. So it's somewhere between 18 to 20 years old, I think is a good age for if someone wants to, you know, really start to lean into to building up muscle and, you know, doing any type of, you know, squats or heavy lifts. Uh, so that's number one, uh, having a, a great chiropractor guide you through it. So again, I, I wish I had had someone taking x-rays of my spine and just, you know, catching some of the early thinning of the disc. My L5 S1 disc is, you know, probably maybe 60, 70% thinned out and had I had... Mine's almost gone, so I get what you're saying. Yeah, so, so, so having someone, you know, keeping a good eye on that, making sure whatever you're doing is, is you know, works with your, your genetic makeup and uh, that, that, that'd be very helpful too. Uh, once you get to that you know, 18, 20 years old to, to roughly, you know, late 20s, maybe 30, uh, I think that's the prime time for, you know, really challenging your body to stretch it to the limits. Uh, and but you still want to be smart about it, right? I, I mean, there's some uh, yeah competitive. Bo- uh, uh, you know, I was talking about Ronnie Coleman the other day of one of the patients, and he's yes. like, yeah, he's he's the, an example of why I didn't get into bodybuilding because the guy can hardly walk now. And he had that deadlift at like a thousand pounds, blew a disc, and that yeah. Was it. Yeah. Yeah, you barely walk now, yeah. Exactly. So still still being smart, still having a, a chiropractor, still having someone that, that can guide you through managing your musculoskeletal system and the overall health of it as you do whatever types of exercise that you, that you enjoy doing. Uh, and then after 30, you know, you start to kind of, you know, wean back. It's, you know, maybe a, a little bit, you know, less and less in terms of the intensity that you're doing. Uh, but for me personally, at, at 39 years old right now, I, I enjoy exercise now. I'm, I'm probably the happiest I've ever been in my life, even though I am not didn't have as much muscle. I wasn't doing as you know, competitive of uh, athletic events as I used to. I, I, I have a healthier relationship with it now, and I think that's what people ought to pursue at, at any age throughout their life, is, is what they're doing really you know, fulfilling. Is it, is it really making them happy, or is it just a, a means to an end? And right. if it's just a means to an end, I, I just don't think that that's a... A sustainable or fruitful way to really approach exercise right and that's one thing I want to touch upon too is obviously people want to look good right and they want to look good feel good but there's also a mental health component um, uh-huh. I'm going to touch upon in a future podcast about what's called the hope molecule H-O-P-E uh-huh. um, they've really recently discovered that helps with mental health it acts as an anti-national um, sorry a natural antidepressant um, but we were talking about, um, you know, the spine. And one thing, one of the things, obviously, as chiropractors, we basically, you know, put joints back into place. But we're also, and everybody disagrees maybe a little bit, depending on who you're talking to, but we distract the spine a little bit to basically gently 
stretch out the joints as well. So one of the things that weightlifting does, especially like we talked about Ronnie Coleman, but um, squatting is important at certain ages. Do you, you recommend at um, an older age, um, let's say, you know, 40 and above that somebody should squat? And the reason I ask is there's something called axial compression. Basically, you know, there's a compression straight down on the spine and that could um, obviously herniate a disc or bulge a disc, which obviously gives pain and issues in the legs and arms, depending on what part of the body we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, squats and deadlifts. Those those two exercises bring in more patients at the chiropractic office than any other than all other exercises combined. Uh, so that's by far the most uh, uh, careful one to be with. Uh, on the on the same token, I, I definitely would not want to dissuade people from doing uh, strength training and from uh, you know trying to work their way up in terms of you know building up their muscles and especially their bone density. I'm just from my chiropractic lens, like I agree, 100%. Uh, and especially you know, any woman, every woman over the age of 50 is like you. You have to be doing strength training. You have to keep your bones strong. Otherwise, you're just you're, you're, you eventually become this eggshell that you just fall over once and you crack a hip and then it's your you could be down for the count. So it's that, game over at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you could come back to the you know kind of high level. That's <clears throat> that's another just big picture strategy I, I think most people don't employ and, and they really ought to is to uh, to find their their weak points in in the big picture of um, of their physical health you know for for women it tends to be the physical strength and they really need to lean into the strength training for men it tends to be more flexibility and they're the ones that should be doing more of the yoga right. but people tend to want to do the things that they're better at so the women are naturally more flexible do more yoga and the men naturally right. stronger they they're the ones hanging out by the weight so I, that's uh, yeah, big picture is something people we should really be be thinking well, about. Well, touching upon that, there's a, a gentleman named David Goggins. I'm sure you've heard about. Oh, correct? Yeah. Incredible human being. I mean, the guy's an incredible athlete, um, Navy SEAL, whatnot. But one thing, um, he's an ultra marathon runner. But one thing he discovered when I was, he's about my age, I'm 50, and one thing he discovered one day is he went to somebody and he's like, basically, I can't move. The guy's like, you can't even, you, you can barely move because you can't. Your 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 muscles are so inflexible. So that obviously this guy has money, he's a motivational speaker, he has the time, he stretches two hours a day because his muscles are, were so inflexible. Now he's doing a lot better, right? Uh -huh. but that's that's the issue, like you talked about it. You have, I mean, everybody wants to focus on what they're comfortable doing, right? right. And the only way you grow is by getting out of your comfort zone. Exactly. And that's what a lot of people, and I understand as it, through the human mind, they don't want to do that, but that's an yeah. important thing to do as well. Yeah, that, I like that word, fun, comfortable, like just trying to waste it to, to have fun, that. you know, doing the things that are not comfortable for you. But yeah, that's, that's where most of the growth is going to happen, you know, yeah. but from a musculoskeletal, physical standpoint, and you know, from perhaps even more importantly, from a mental standpoint and just, you know, inner strength. Yeah, that, that's what people ought to, ought to right. emphasize. So your advice, obviously, for older people, let's say just a, just um, arbitrary number, 40 years old and older, sure. you're recommending, obviously, more... Um, High reps, low weights. Is that safe to say? I, I'd say in in, in general, yeah, I, I, I just in variety. Yeah, you still can obviously build muscle at that age. It's yeah. just you got to be more, more careful with it, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it depends on, on the exercise. I mean, if someone's doing a, a bicep curl and they're gradually working their way up, I, I think they could, you know, do uh, probably do a little bit heavier weight and a little bit lower reps if they want to do it. It's just those compressive type exercises, the, the squats and the Agreed. deadlifts, if, if you have to do them, which you know, I'd, I'd probably encourage people to you know, just figure out other ways to get the, you know, get those parts of the body strong. But if they have to do them for whatever reason, for the class or for whatever sporting uh, program or their, or their CrossFit, you know, for whatever reason they have to do them, I, yes, definitely, you know, lighter weight and, and higher reps. Absolutely. Another thing too is, is I'm a chiropractor as well, obviously. Uh, one thing I have seen a lot, and I'm sure you've seen a, a before, is avulsion fractures. Uh -huh. um, one thing I've noticed, um, especially with young athletes and even older um, athletes, is overtraining. Um, I have a lot of like moms come in or dads. Usually, it's a softball pitcher. Uh -huh. uh, how many pitches does he throw a day? Three, four hundred. Well, it's no wonder her upper back hurts. You yeah. know? Um, as far as like resting between workouts, what do you recommend? Yeah, it depends on the person and, and where they're at and uh, and their age. It, I think it's something they have to they have to feel out if they're just getting into it. Uh, I think you should go one day and you can you know probably take the next day off and circle back the next day. Take the three to four days a week. Yeah, it, it depends. If if you really challenge a muscle, if you get a good good pump in, in your arms, your legs, and and it's feeling sore the following day, then I, I think you can take that day off and right. allow it to to recover. And it's there's. 
very much an intuitive aspect to exercise I don't think people tap into enough. And I think the more you really get good at listening to your body, okay, this, when I do this exercise this way, it tweaks the shoulder a little bit, even though the trainer said or, or the YouTube video said this is the proper form, like I'm, I'm, it's kind of cranking on the joint, listen to that joint, like, you know, figure out a way to get it where if you feel any type of joint discomfort, if you feel like the tendons are just, you know, getting a little inflamed, then, then listen to the body and figure out a way to do it differently. And if you can't, then just find a different exercise altogether. Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you haven't worked out. Let's say somebody hasn't worked out in six months, three months, whatever it might be. They're going to feel sore. They're going to feel achy. You know, maybe, I want to say a dull pain, but there's like that uncomfortableness uh -huh. uh, to the muscles, correct? But yeah, like you said, if it comes down to a sharp stabbing pain, something that just doesn't feel right. Now, yeah, work through the pain, obviously. The more experience you get, the easier it is, the more you're in tune with your body. But right. I think a, a novice, a beginner should, um, and I think you agree as well, that you know, if you're not sure, just pull back, ice it down, yeah. relax. You know, there's always tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously working out every day is ideal uh, to a certain extent, but if you can't do it, definitely uh, cut it back and then just uh, err, err on the side of caution. Yeah. And what about you, Doug? You're a healthy, good-looking guy. You're keeping yourself in good shape. I appreciate Thank uh, you. What, what you, what's your recommendation for, for someone in, in your uh, age category? Honestly, um, I, I used to build, um, I was probably about 40 pounds heavier, just stacked with muscle about 15 years ago. It looked good, it looked impressive, it just felt uncomfortable, I just felt bulky. Yeah. Um, honestly, I would recommend um, moderate reps, moderate weight, again, depending on injuries, depending on what you have going on uh, as far as, you know, a gentleman our age usually have some kind of disc problem of some type. We're going to need a disc, hopefully, or hopefully not, but sometimes a bulging disc, if not a degenerated disc where the disc narrows because of arthritic changes uh -huh. of not uh, having the joint moved around quite a bit from a chiropractic uh, adjustment perspective. Um, I would say, obviously, we want to look at um, cardiovascular training as well, you know, three days a week. I know the, the recommended thing now is a 15 degree incline. Um, at a three mile per an hour pace for 20 minutes. That's obviously what they're finding is almost as good as running. Uh -huh. um, and then also weight training three to four days a week, hitting each muscle group, major muscle group especially. Now if you're gonna do compound exercises, that even works better. Uh -huh. But that's what I'd recommend. I, I just think um, at our age, you know, it's, it's still about looking good, feeling good, staying mentally healthy. But at, at some point, I, I think it's important to still work out, but just cut it back a little bit to where your our bodies just break down as we grow older. They just do naturally, uh -huh. you know, unfortunately. And um, one of the stats um, I think we talked about earlier um, was I, you look at a 30-year-old, you look at an 80-year-old. Other than the obvious changes in physical appearance, you know, gray hair, wrinkles, what is the difference between these two people? Well, it's obviously muscle mass. You know, we talked, like you said, touched on earlier, broken hips. Uh, people in nursing homes can barely get out of a chair. I mean, their physical therapy is learning how to get out of a chair. Right. It shouldn't be that hard, I mean, but yeah. that's what happens at that age. But the stat I've heard um, through some research studies is every year after 30, your body breaks down 1% of your muscle mass per year. Uh -huh. That's incredible. So by the time you're 80 years old, half your muscle mass without any kind of weight training, whether it be resistance bands, whether it be, um, you know, um, free weights, dumbbells, whatever it might be, you're going to lose that muscle mass. And like we talked about earlier with ladies over 50, um, our medical friends who do a great job, and there's no way I'm knocking them whatsoever, but they'll give um, some of these artificially, um, you know, artificial things for calcium. And if you look at the bone structure under a microscope, it's not as good as natural. Right. Right. Yeah. So again, one of the big things you want to do is, um, I always tell patients, it's the use it or lose it. Um, situation where um, the tendon pulls up on the muscle and then the, bo the body's forcing to lay down new bone. So uh -huh. if you want to exercise the muscle, the tendon is the pulley, right? It pulls the, the muscle or the bone up rather a little bit, the periosteum, right? Uh -huh. And you lay down new bone. That's how it works naturally. Yeah. So the body's an amazing machine. We just got to put it in perspective and let it, allow it to work the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. So, uh, well, I appreciate uh, the talk, Doc. Um, any any uh, closing remarks or anything you want to kind of add to our conversation before we uh, end the podcast? Uh, maybe just really hone in on the, the enjoyment aspect. You know, we can always talk about, you know, these are the exercises you should do, you shouldn't do, and, 
you know, vast majority of people, and you know, I don't know if our audience is you know, already on the, the health bandwagon or not, but just statistically speaking, most people don't stick with exercise, and I think the main reason because they don't figure out a way to make it something that they just generally want to do, not for necessarily for the results, but just for the enjoyment of the process. And yeah, head so down, can, walk into the gym. I don't want to do this. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, it just don't don't make it that. You know, I I, I personally I, I dance around when I'm lifting weights. I'm always figuring out ways to, to make it make it fun for me, Absolutely. make it enjoyable, and I hope everyone can figure out a way to, you know, not just exercise safely, but exercise and enjoyably and in a way that's just you know real uh, real fun and enjoyable and uh, uh, something they can stick with for a long time. Awesome. Well, Dr. Kane, I appreciate your time. Um, so we at Total Health Systems are here to help you get and stay healthy. You deserve it. Goodbye, everybody. We'll talk to you on the next podcast.